taking place in the invisible world. With this in mind, I take the apostolic authority that God has given me, and I decree to Todd Bentley, your power will increase. Your authority will increase. Your favor will increase. Your influence will increase. Your revelation will increase. Of course, only weeks later, Todd Bentley's movement completely fell apart. No amount of Stacey Campbell shaking her head was going to change that fact. I'm receiving the tablets. Get after Numbers 24. Just a few weeks later, on July the 9th, ABC Nightline had a special on Todd Bentley in the Lakeland Revival. Little did we know this would be the beginning of the end of the revival. Can you supply us with three people who have been cured for a miracle with a medical diagnosis, their name, but we never got three. Instead, we were given a binder filled with what Bentley says are stories of inspiring miracles. We offered incomplete contact information, a few pages of incomplete medical records, doctors' names were crossed out. And so, not a single miracle claim of Bentley's could be verified. But then came even more shocking news. Todd Bentley was separating from his wife. He'd apparently been having an affair with a female staff member even while the revival was going. And of course, at this point, the entire revival collapsed. Lee Brady, the editor of Charisma magazine, spoke for multitudes around the world when he wrote these words. Todd Bentley's announcement that his marriage is ending has thrown our movement into a tailspin and questions need to be answered. It was not supposed to end like this. But sadly, that was not the end. Todd Bentley divorced his wife, married his girlfriend, and the biggest prophetic ministry in the world, run by Rick Joyner, undertook a speedy restoration process to fast-track Todd Bentley back on stage again. And now here he is, back again, ministering alongside his new wife. And the thing about the elephant, it wasn't just an ordinary elephant, it was a wild elephant, a wild elephant. As we've already seen, these same spasmodic head movements in Hinduism are taken as a sure sign of a Kundalini awakening. Why then are we now seeing them in the church? There's for everyone, for every Christian. And so, aided and abetted by some of the biggest names in Christendom, Todd Bentley and others oh, to be to spread this anointing right through the charismatic church. I pray some of you would feel like you're getting electrocuted. But this is not just about Todd Bentley and his friends. This is about thousands of charismatic leaders all over the world who made the decision not just to bring this stuff in and endorse it, but to actually transfer it onto their own people. And I don't care if, if it was peer pressure, uh, just because every other minister seemed to be getting into it. I don't care what the reasons were. This is one of the worst, most disturbing movements that maybe the church has ever seen. And these guys brought it in deliberately into the church. And when the very top apostles and prophets in the entire charismatic movement can get up on a stage and endorse and promote and prophesy the grandest things over such a suspect movement that was obviously suspect right from the start, we've got to know our top leadership, they don't have any discernment. Your power will increase. Your authority will increase. Your favor will increase. We need a revolution in the leadership of the church. But as we've seen, a new generation of leaders has arisen and it doesn't seem like holiness that they're spreading. I want to read from, from Luke chapter 1. This is John Crowder, probably the worst that I've ever seen. And yet his influence is growing enormously, especially amongst the youth. But I love your heavy, drunken glory. And I firmly believe in token the ghosts, right? <laughs> Have a little Jehovah Wana. And so we just, I have to, and the thing is, it's free. You just reach in your pocket. Wow, look at what's there. You just take a 
to hide the fact of how much we're looking at that that Vena that I was talking about. This is Lucy Rail, who now has a home in the charismatic movement simply because of these bizarre signs and wonders. And this is Joshua Mills, who specializes in glittering dust appearing, as well as out of body spirit travel and other things. All over my body, of Samoa was People will travel hundreds of miles to see this stuff. And then there are the angels. Even though the Bible specifically warns us about angels of light, now everywhere we look, we see the weirdest and most church, bizarre accounts the children's ministry, of so-called angels appearing. They'll have special days. But why do they not the cherish the holy fear the of the Lord low, like the angels play, in the Bible? Let them go around from this is Sid Roth's TV show, which apart from God TV, is one of the angels. biggest promoters of all these strange experiences in the church. My guest, Joshua Mills, is a legitimate sign and wonder. And this is Patricia King of Extreme Prophetic, interviewing the famous prophet Bob Jones as well as Todd Bentley. You gave me a phone call and you said, hey, I've just been soaking with Bob Jones and I've gone up into the third heaven and all that. And, and it was all new to me. I'd never even heard that kind of language before and I was so hungry for it. I hope you can see that all these different ministries and streams are really one big movement. United by this strange anointing that they started spreading everywhere in the 1990s. And still they spread it today. And so we're left with an enormous worldwide movement in the church that is absolutely loaded with spiritual forces and practices and experiences that seem to come straight out of Eastern mysticism. And they're busy telling us not to discern, but to turn off our minds. Not only that, but it seems very clear that it's targeting the youth. Is this movement dangerous? Clearly we have to say yes. And hopefully through this documentary, you can see why. But there's just one thing I want to talk about before we bring this program to a close. You know, a lot of people, when they see this stuff, they go right over to the other extreme. They don't want any miracles. They don't want any prophecies whatsoever. They want nothing to do with a supernatural God. But we see from the New Testament right. again and again, God does do miracles. They are holy miracles. God does do supernatural things, but they have a holy character about them. Even angels do visit people from time to time. They are holy angels. And this is the distinction we've got to make. We can't afford to be losing the New Testament. We can't afford to be doing away with healings and miracles. We've got to have these things. We've got to have them in balance. We should have them in abundance. We've got to be a New Testament people. Now you'll see here in just a minute, uh, Jesus Culture, Passion Conference, Winter Jam, how all this stuff has affected going into the youth movement now today how what way that's affected the youth movement of the day and i promise you it's almost done <laughs>
Now listen to this guy. Is a life lived in the secret place. With Jesus, Listen. you have to know, God's not just calling you to move in signs and wonders. He's calling you to be with Him. He's calling, not only calling you to do signs and wonders. So this is all they're pumping into the minds of young people. Is he signs and wonders? Listen to these two words. I have pain on my knee, but I got pain on my back. And I'm like, brother, come and pray with you. And he says, yes. So I said, Joe, she puts her phone down. We start praying. Instantly healed. And we could not... They were stuck on the train. Instead of sharing the gospel, she asked, I got pain in my knee. Anybody else on this train got pain in her knee? Yes, I got pain in my back. Can we pray for you? Instantly healed. If I was stuck on a train, and that train went moving, guess what? I can get up and ask them, you got pain in your knee? I'm going to tell them how Jesus died, was buried, and rose again. Amen. Amen. Come on. Favors you, it's not so that you build your own empire. The Bible talks about us being kings and priests of the Lord. Kings. His idea of king and the world's idea of king is completely different. When he talked about kings, he meant, I'm going to empower you with my favor so extremely so that you are positioned to show favor on other people. Right, so you know what he's talking about? He's not talking about going out soul winning. When they go out and do what we call soul winning, they're going out literally to lost people out on the street and asking them if they have any sickness and they lay hands on them. And that jump that you saw happening on the other video, I've seen video of their young people going out and doing that same thing to people on the streets and people on the street falling out and flopping around with them. Transfer that demonic spirit over them instead of saying, Hey, do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? Do you know that He died for you? He was buried and He rose again. No, they're all about signs and wonders and His Kundalini spirit. And this is what's overtaken our youth. And what I said was sad that it has crept into the Baptist church and now it's crept in, starting to creep into independent Baptist churches. Is I can tell you right now, I can name an independent Baptist church in our area that is starting to dabble into this garbage. And I promise you, if the Lord should tarry, five years from now, it'll be full on charismatic and will no longer be an independent fundamental Baptist church teaching and preaching biblical doctrine. Even longer. Their, their idea of us, they're on the street. All these conferences, you know what they're saying their goal is? Is to raise up a generation of revivalists. In other words, they want a revival of this Kundalini spirit. They want it to spread across the country and around the world. They're not preaching Jesus crucified, buried, and risen again. All they're doing is having a rock concert, and that's a great way for the devil to creep in because when you're listening to that kind of music, you keep your brain in the neutral and you're focused in on the rhythm. By the way, Satan was the minister of music in heaven. The Bible said that he had pipes built inside you, and so they use that music as a way to keep their minds into neutral and it gets them caught up into a trance-like state and then they start filling their head full of that garbage of signs and wonders, glittery glory clouds, the Kundalini spirit and the kids leave from there thinking they've experienced the Bible. And then they take you from there back to their home church, their, their local schools, and it's spreading like wildfire amongst the, amongst the young people. And what, what, we take, what we have here, we take for granted. We take for granted what we have here. Because what we have here, our young people being taught sound biblical doctrine and having young people in the ministry working for the Lord, sharing the gospel, that's rare nowadays. Because this is what young people are being fed. That's that leadership guy, the guy who created, founded Jesus Christ. And it's nothing but a full rock concert, pretty much, for like five days, for like four or five hours straight at a time. Everybody ever seen the demonstration of an egg hung up in front of a speaker, blasting rock music at those decibels over about five, six hours time with an egg hard balls. Imagine what that does to a human brain. Alright, so that was Jesus culture. I think this next
mention this Apache Comfort. It's just a little bit more mild. But notice the symbol there. What does that look like? It looks like an all C and I to me. That's a theme for the Apache Comfort, but it looks like an all C and I. Francis Chan, oh, man. goes to, uh, how many of y'all heard of Beth Moore? Beth Moore, she's a writer, and a women's speaker, and preacher, and guess where she's going to be at in about two months? In the biggest Southern Baptist Church of King's Island, she'll be there speaking. They practice that, let the divina have passion for They'll stand up open up the Bible, and they'll read a chapter. And then they'll have the entire stadium go silent. And Francis Chan, Beth Moore, McCray, John Piper, different ones, they'll just start repeating over again. Jesus, speak to us. Jesus, speak to us. And they just do this over and over again. And young people go to that stuff every year, and they find that they're, this is Christian, this is, I'm on fire for God. Not a bunch of dogs. I saw a video of people who are like us, street preachers, outside of that, street preaching to the people on their way into the conference, and the people that are supposedly Christian going into these conferences are laughing at them and mocking them and making fun of them. Yeah. Yeah, by the way, Chris Tomlin and, and all of these well-known singers, they're all the passion Inside the Georgia Dome, with tens of thousands of other people just like you, as we lift up the name of Jesus, we open His living word, we come together as a force for good, and we aim our lives toward the things that matter most. January 1st through 4th, the Georgia Dome. Atlanta, Georgia. Don't miss it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Look, I mean, hey, look at 
when I go to last place money, go here steal it. When you yeah. take spend the same money, go here good group. <laughs> At least you ain't faking it then, right? Here, 
to reach a generation. Hey, we may be one church. And we may be just a small congregation here tonight. But God has given us an opportunity to reach as many young people as we can for the causes of Christ so they don't fall into this garbage, so they don't go to hell and burn for all eternity. Folks, let's not take for granted what God's given us here. But let's say, I'll go. I'll go. God send me. God, I'll go. This altar's open here tonight. Will you be willing to get an altar and say, God, here am I. Send me. I'll go. Help me to reach those young girls. Help me to reach those young boys. Help me to tell them the good news that Jesus came and He died and He was buried and He rose again. And if we put our faith and our trust in the gospel, we can be saved. We can be truly set free. Our sins will be washed away. Our name will be written down in the last book of life. Folks, we know the truth. The Bible says that the truth shall set you free. I've been set free. I want others to be set free. Let's not bring the world into the church and try to entertain people to draw in numbers. But instead, let's do what the Bible said. Let's come and let's gather together here and the church be edified and grow in the knowledge of the Word of God to grow in doctrine and understanding of God's Word and then go outside the church doors and go out into the highways and the hedges and compel them to come in that His house may be filled. Go to where they are and to share the gospel with them. Go out into all the world and preach, that, preach Jesus crucified, buried, and risen again. Say, preacher, we're, we're just a just a handful of folks in a little no-name town in a little spot on the map. You'd be surprised at how many young people are around us. Our city right here alone, Kings Mountain, out in the surrounding area. Last time I, I looked at the population a couple years ago, I believe it was somewhere around like 100,000 people. That's a lot of people in a small town. On the way to church tonight, Kings Mountain High School, they were having their orientation tonight on a Wednesday night. Five, ten years ago, that wouldn't have happened. People would have been in the house of God. Amen. But they're having their orientation tonight. Right around the time the church to start. You know what I saw as I passed by? So I don't normally go by the high school on the way to church, but I had to tonight because I was needing this poster board. And I got caught in traffic there and had to wait for the police officer to help cross people back and forth across the road because there were so many people there for that high school orientation. You realize that Kings Mountain High School is not but about two and a half, three miles from this church? There's literally probably 1,500 teenagers that go to that school Monday through Friday most of the year. And most of those kids... I would say it would be a safe bet to say, even though we're in the buckle of the Bible Belt, I've never heard a clear-cut gospel message. Because the church that they probably go to, if they even go to church, this is what they're promoting for the young people. What we were talking about here tonight is what they're practicing in the church. And that's what they're giving to their young people. And they're raising up a generation of young people that don't know Christ as their Savior and they're on their way to hell. Folks, that'll break our hearts. We've got the truth. Let's not keep it bottled up inside. But let's take it outside the doors. They might laugh at us. They might make fun of us. They may reject the message. But at least we can stand before the Lord Jesus Christ and say that we ran our race and we finished well and we did all that we could to stand in the last day. Amen. You know what? It's all right to be in the righteous minority. But that righteous minority better stand up and stand together and proclaim truth until Jesus Christ calls us home. Amen. Let's never fall into this. But let's use this as a way to encourage us and to inspire us and to motivate us to share the gospel. To get in the Bible. To bathe in the Word of God. To rightly divide the Word of truth. And to have sound doctrine be a major part of our lives and in taking and pass it to others so that they can have a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we're doing in children's church. That's the whole purpose of the vans and the buses. That's the whole purpose of youth camp. That's the whole purpose of vacation Bible school. That's the whole purpose in behind the, the youth trips that we had throughout the summer. 
was to encourage the young people and get them here to where they hear good, sound, biblical teaching and preaching so they have a closer relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The youth to our future church. It looks pretty bleak for the country and what we've seen here tonight. But here at Glory Bound Baptist Church, it looks bright. Let's not lose that real fire, the real fire that the Lord Jesus Christ has given us. We have the Holy Ghost living on the inside of us. <clears throat> Let's spend time on our knees in prayer. Spend time searching the Scriptures and be a witness for the Lord Jesus Christ until He calls us home. Amen. Our dear and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank You for all Your many blessings. Thank You, Lord, for Your Word. Thank You, Lord, for the truths that we find in Your Word. Thank You, Lord, for each and every person that's here tonight. Thank You, Lord, for them being so attentive uh, to a very long service. But God, I pray that we take what we've heard here tonight, the Scripture, the preaching, and, and the, the visual aid here, and may we take all this in. And God, I pray that we have a closer walk with You and be a help and a blessing and a witness to every person, especially the young people, when we come in contact with them. Help us to do, be about Your business. Use us for Your glory. In Jesus Christ's name we humbly pray. Amen. 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 God bless y'all. I know it was long tonight. I appreciate y'all being very attentive. When we get this posted, I hope the video comes out good. When this goes up, everybody please share this. I, I, even though we may get ridiculed, I may get laughed at by some, it's okay. I want it to be shared. I want people to see what the truth is. God bless y'all. Thank y'all.